This is worse than the left. I'll produce your show. We'll produce your show. If there are enough of you out there, I will transition Mug Club. You, but no, <laughs> you won't. You would give the exact same terms. Crowder doesn't hate the individual terms of the contract. He might say he does, but he doesn't. What he hates is the fee. No, I'm sorry. That's six million a month in revenue. Uh, that Steven's audience- Wait, what did you say? <laughs> Wait, what? Think, 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 Nick. The contract says that they get exclusive rights to that money. Why would they write him a lower contract offer than what he's already bringing in sub numbers if those numbers are gonna transfer over? In addition to the two million or so. Uh, oh, so he, he doesn't know the number. He has no idea. Don't sign this. What's it? What Certainly it not. What? Without professional legal counsel representation, do not sign something that includes, you know, let me go through this. Yeah, tell, tell us. <clears throat> merch rights remain the exclusive right to create and sell Crowder and Crowder content branded merchandise. All remuneration for the blank and exploitation of these rights, including the fee. Blank. Email list. Blank will maintain the exclusive right to manage, grow, monetize all crowd email lists in the term. Oh, blank is the, um, uh, the uh, not the client, but the um, the person selling the contract. Okay, I'll explain what each of these means. Holy shit. Okay. So <clears throat> I think this is about the Daily Wire, right? We'll just say company X, okay? So this is saying that company X is going to maintain the exclusive right to create and sell Crowder and Crowder content branded merchandise. All remuneration for that merchandise, I guess, and exploitation of these rights is included in the fee. So this is saying whatever company he was gonna sign for would have, they would be the only ones that would be allowed to sell his merchandise. Now, I don't know what these terms are for, like how many years or whatever. So this might be good, it might be bad, I'm not sure. Email list, so the company X is going to have the exclusive right to manage, grow, and monetize that email list. This is means that Crowder wouldn't be able to sell his own merch anymore. Crowder wouldn't be able to manage his own email list anymore. And then social media management, Blank will have the exclusive right to manage, curate, and monetize Crowder's official Facebook, YouTube, Apple Podca uh, Podcasts, Spotify, Snapchat, Rumble, and other social media accounts, excluding Crowder's existing personal Twitter and Instagram accounts during the term. Additionally, Blank will have the perpetual an exclusive right to create, own, manage, curate, and monetize any and all social media accounts or any social media accounts on the, on the Crowder content or shows. All remuneration for the exposition of these rights, including the fee. <clears throat> Interesting. So this would give them the, the um, exclusive rights to they would be the only ones monitoring and managing like the YouTube account, the Facebook account, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Effectively, uh, full ownership of all your social media uh, platforms, channels, in perpetuity, the rights to your content, name, image, likeness, um, even the ones that you've built. Don't sign contracts out there that include multi-million dollar penalties for different, con let, let, let me read you an example of what I mean. If Crowder fails to deliver a monthly content in any month or any of the quarterly content in the corner, including any and all ad reads, and by the way, all these contracts came with three, four, five ad reads per show, which would fundamentally change what this show is. Gotta get those dollar dollar bills. If I failed to do that, it would be a- $100,000 reduction in the fee per instance. <laughs> That's their monthly content or any of the quarterly content. Uh, $250,000 reduction in the fee per instance. Crowder fails to deliver annual content in any year, including any and all ad reads. Uh, $1 million reduction in the fee per instance. <laughs> Jesus. A $250,000 reduction in fee per quarter. If, let's say, uh, we did do everything per quarter, but annually maybe missed something. Like let's say we went and did a change my mind instead of a daily show, which of course requires a lot more work. It'd be a separate $1 million penalty for that if you miss a single piece of What's content. What's his fee though? And the amount Everyone of content Everyone is saying required 50 million, but he hasn't with, gone over it Frankly, yet it's worse than Disney. It's worse than ABC. It's worse than NBC. It's worse than CBS. This is ownership of you and everything that you do. But here's, just to drive it home, don't sign something that has another $100,000 daily penalty if it's not signed off on beforehand.
You get a sick, you get hit by a car, you have a sick day, you could lose $100,000 a day. To be fair, it said in that contract it was without written approval. My guess, we don't really know if these terms are unfair or not, but my guess is going to be that if you have a very large fee, meaning you're being paid a dollar amount for a contract, irrespective of the viewership you get or any deliverables or whatever, you're just getting a flat fee, there's probably going to be some pretty heavy stipulations on that because um, they're going to want to make sure that you're working, right? Like imagine if it, is, if it is the case that The Daily Wire offered him $50 million, like, yeah, if you start missing episodes or if you start missing big annual events, of course, we're going to, we're going to dock that initial fee that we had, right? Hey, I, mean, I don't think that's anyone that Anyone wonder why there's right? burnout in this? Anyone wonder why you have kids come up and they leave and never to come back? You think if you had that kind of a penalty, you think if oh, someone said, hey, we're going to penalize you $10,000? Sure. Every day you miss coming into work, you think you'd be stressed? This is worse than the left frames their contracts. Again, I don't, of course I didn't sign any of these things. But I now know what other kids are signing out there. And here's the worst part. Yeah, that's terrible. I think it's, um, I just think that's wrong to treat people that way. But this is where in going through this and I need to take some time because look, I, I've always tried to be a happy warrior uh -oh. uh, and I want to go back to that. I haven't, I haven't been happy for a while. To be really, I, I haven't been happy for a while because when you know what goes on behind these scenes yeah. and you see how many people are complicit, it creates an air of hopelessness. It really does. Where you think the people who are supposed to be linking arms and fighting with you, fighting for you, want to punish you. So here's the worst part. Do not, kids, under any circumstances, sign a contract with people who claim to be conservative but will penalize you 25% for any demonetization or sponsor boycott. Look, let me read this to you. If any of the major platforms... Oh, no, sorry, that's the second one. Let me go back to the first one. There's another 20%. It's 45% if you get a content strike. Let's start with the demonetization. If blank is boycotted or dropped by more than 50% of uh, the advertising partners, the company is not able to replace them within 90 days, the fee will be reduced by 25%. Uh, Jesus. Uh, that's a sponsorship boycott. So that's saying, hey, 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 liberals, boycotts work. They work on our guys. We'll punish them for you. Let me go on, specifically YouTube demonetization. If any of the major platforms issues a content strike such that Crowder cannot be monetized on such platform, and the company is not able to resolve the issue within 90 days, the fee will be reduced by 25% moving forward. Now, I thought this was a mistake because, you know, these people maybe didn't know who I am, that we've been demonetized for three years. No, it was made very clear to me in no uncertain terms. This is what's sent out to everybody. And then if you get a, then if you get a strike, meaning a suspension, another 20% reduction. And then another 20% of it happens on Apple. And then another 10% of it happens on Facebook. And then another 10% of it happens on Spotify. <laughs> Damn. Imagine you're deplatformed, as we've seen in the past, where all of the major entities decide to remove you in one day. Rather than having a conservative alternative, you would now be down to 5 to 15% of the revenue of your contract. Think about, think about this for a second. Those in charge, the big conservative, the big con, and it really is the biggest con going right now, they're making it known in their contracts yeah. that they will enforce the guidelines of big tech and punish conservatives on their behalf. Don't, don't, hey, don't, don't worry, Wojcicki. Uh, these, trust me, these conservatives will stay in line. If they get demonetized, we take away 25% of their operating budget. Take another 20% away if they get a hard strike. Hey, don't worry, Zuckerberg. We've got your back. Hope to see you at the UFC Apex. Those guidelines pretty much read, don't say anything. I, the thing is, is I don't understand, I don't understand any of this. If, like, once we finish Factorio, as I'm taking politics more seriously, 
if I started doing more political work and a company came up to me and they were like, hey, do you want to like work with us and we'll pay you a lot of money? My first question is going to be like, okay, well, can I still say all the shit that I normally can? And they're probably going to say, well, a little bit, but not really. Like if you get like banned or whatever, obviously like, okay, yeah, I'm probably not going to take that deal. I probably can't take that deal. Um, I don't know how that's not obvious that <clears throat> if you're going to, if you're going to sign a contract where you get paid money, if somebody is paying you money for your content, then the idea is going to be that content is going to make them money. That's business 101. I, I feel like this should be a conservative saying this. If I'm buying shit from you, it's because I'm going to make money off it. That's capitalism. I'm not going to buy you shit, or I'm not going to buy shit from you, and then all your shit gets banned, and then I'm still going to pay you. That's not how it's going to work. So I, I don't understand what I don't understand what Crowder is complaining about. It just seems really weird. If you're signing with a company, of course, a, a, every every single contract ever that you will ever sign in your entire life, for the few of you that are ever in like entertainment positions, they're always going to include clauses that they're going to have termination clauses. They're going to have like um, liability clauses. They're going to have the ability to pursue damages with, with delegated arbitration. If you are doing shit that makes their company look bad or puts them in a bad light, like that's, this is standard in every contract in entertainment or probably almost anything, probably in the tech world even, that you sign. There's always going to be clauses like that. Um, and this is, yeah, it's, there's, um, yeah, it's not even, yeah, of course. I, like, I wouldn't even get mad, of course. It's standard practice, standard business practice. I don't, I, don't, I'm not, I don't understand why you'd be so surprised or shocked or upset about this. Thing offensive ever. Well, what's offensive? Whatever is stuck in Susan Wojcicki's craw that day. I wish those at the top in big conservative with Granted, yeah, a lot of the money wanted to do better, but they don't. That's why I've created StopBigCon.com, and you can be a signatory, and our plans therein. Look, like I've said, I have the luxury of not signing this. I don't need it. I've been demonetized for years. Uh, we've adapted here precisely because of Mug Club. I've promised you we won't do more than one sponsorship spot per show. I will keep my word on that until this show ends. Which is good. Why? Because it's designed for you. It's not designed for the sponsors. If it's four, five, six, seven sponsors, they're no longer the product. You're the product. That's, fi that's fine. I, like, that's why I have subs on my website and shit. I don't think I can get sponsors. My content is way too edgy. And if somebody wanted to sponsor me, I'm going to have a whole bunch of questions. And it's probably going to end up being, no, I can't, like, this doesn't work for me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to change my messaging or, or change my shit to make you guys happy. Because it would just, it would change my brand too much. But that's fine. That's just that's how these worlds work. It sucks that it's like that way. I agree with that. But like, these companies all live and die on like advertiser revenue and shit. So of course you have to keep advertisers happy. Like, <clears throat> so we've adapted. Destiny is way off on this. Wait, what do you think I'm way off on? What are you talking about? Okay, never mind. Did here. I don't need this, we've been demonetized and we're not beholden to sponsors who might get boycotted because the sponsors that we have are going to go wherever we go anyway. We know that beyond any shadow of a doubt. That's the luxury of doing business honestly and loyalty. That's not about doing business honestly and loyalty. It's about choosing smaller, more niche sponsors. Like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm just, this is me in business mode. I'm not even like being a political ideologue here or anything. Like. Crowder's sponsors, my guess are they're probably all pretty small sponsors that are also ideologically driven. That'd be my guess, right? Like, does he have any like A-list sponsors or is it like Black Rifle Coffee and everything, right? It's probably gonna be other people that have quite a bit to gain from being on Crowder's platform rather than like A-list, like top tier blue chip companies or whatever. And no offense, and that's fine. That model works well for him. That's you know, those are typically the kinds of sponsors that I would probably look for. There's nothing wrong with that, but um. To the kids out there coming up who don't have that luxury, please don't sign these. You can do better. We can all do better. To everyone out there who refuses to sign or is under the cloud of these maybe not entirely enforceable contracts, look, here, here's your signal. Water's warm here. I'll 
produce your show, will produce your show. If there are enough of you out there, I will transition Mug Club. You, but no, <laughs> you won't. You would give the exact same terms. You would give the exact same terms. If somebody was coming to you, you're gonna have clauses in your thing that says, these are your deliverables for the, for the term, the contract. We expect you to do X, Y, Z number of shows. If you do this, if you end up getting canceled, if you end up making our brand look bad, if you go into some crazy anti-Semitic shit and now people are canceling us, you're gonna have, um, your fee is gonna be reduced. Whatever fee was agreed upon is gonna be reduced. There might even be fines or, pe fines or penalties beyond that. They're gonna have arbitration clauses and they're like, of course, this is a standard. And you would do the same thing. I know you would, because you're not, well, I don't think you're a, a fucking idiot when it comes to managing your business shit. I think Crowder and his crew are like reasonably successful. Um, like, into a full-scale network with independent content creators who don't want to be locked into slave contracts. Look, I understand that business relationships sometimes fall through, people don't see eye to eye, I get that, but there is a way to structure these contracts and a network. There's a world in which contracts and a network exists where everyone benefits with some semblance of fairness trans- You know what the way to structure it is, is yeah, here's the only thing that I would suggest, and I, I don't know anything. I'm not like a, I'm not in the big business world, but I feel like if you wrote these things as bonuses rather than as penalties, I think that people would be, um, I think that people would be, I think people would be less mad. <clears throat> so like, there should have been a. Um, Like, it should have been, like, if you if you hit, like, every episode or some shit, there's, like, a $50,000 bonus. Or if you hit every single whatever, you get this. Rather than, like, penalizing people. Because they probably read that favorably. <laughs> Rather than, like, the penalties. Like, people get, like, really mad reading them. Uh, that'd be, like, a guess, but I don't know. <clears throat> Stick right about Crowder. Guys like Crowder and Kanye get taken advantage of because they don't negotiate. And then they build these conspiracies and martyrdom around it. I see it affecting people's minds. The only thing in this world, you need to nut up and ask for it end of story. A little bit. But here, my, here's my guess, and I don't know. My guess is gonna be that they probably tried to negotiate. They wanted to get rid of some of these like clauses, but then the Daily Wire is like, okay, we'll do it, but we're gonna cut down on the fee, and they probably couldn't settle on a fee, right? Because technically, Crowder doesn't hate the individual terms of the contract. He might say he does, but he doesn't. What he hates is the fee, because there is a number. If the Daily Wire was gonna write them a $500 million contract, this mother going to limp out of his car crash and he's going to go to work that day. He'll do it, right? If the fee is right, the terms are A-OK. -okay. The problem is they just couldn't negotiate on a fee that was agreeable to him with the terms that were provided. That's what's happening here. But not that they, by the way, not that there's anything wrong with that on either side. The Daily Wire is perfectly within their right to say, listen, if we're going to give you $50 million, you better be hitting all your shows and don't get demonetized. Don't have your shit fucked up and don't fuck our shit up. And Steven Crowder is totally within his right to say, hey, listen, I bring a lot of value to your platform. I'm probably more popular than every motherfucker here except for Ben Shapiro. You're going to pay me a lot of money if you want me to like, if you want to penalize me for missing episodes, I want $100 million, not $50 million. They're both within their rights to do this. They just couldn't settle on terms where both of them felt like they were getting equally fucked and uh, sucked at the same time, I guess. It's parents, there's no need to be enslaved like this. If, if you're out there right now and you're making content work, on whatever scale that may be, there are levels to this game. I understand that and you'd like to have some backup, you'd like to have some brothers, sisters, Zs and arms, some security without losing your shirt, send your email to creators at louderwithcrowder.com and we'll talk. You want a partnership? Great. Can probably work something out. You want the security of being an employee? Could probably make that work too. There are many ways to skin this cat. And you know what? If Mug Club or whatever network it becomes isn't for you, if this isn't the right home for you, we have lawyers and representation who will negotiate your contract for you with anyone else out there at half the market rate. Why would you? He's like, he's virtually so hard. None of this is sustainable. This is like that shit where people say they're going to do some shit and it lasts for like six months. And they're like, okay, well, maybe there's a reason why. If you felt this way, let me put it this way. And I've oh. heard feedback from you. Okay. If you feel in your gut yeah. That a lot of conservative content out there feels homogenous, feels sanitized. What does that mean? Feels like they're, they're, they're missing some key points. There's a reason for that. There's a reason that you know. You, you often find yourself asking, hey, I wonder why X won't talk about Y. 
And I now know any contract that I would have signed would have turned this into yet another softer radio show on video littered with live reads for every sponsor that could be crammed into every single episode possible, devoid of the sketches, the change my mind type segments, the spontaneity, the levity that's made this show exactly what it is. Oh, and by the way, I was told would never work by the same powers that be. Ooh. And the real reason the stakes are so high for us here, but me specifically, look, either I'm a break glass in case of emergency candidate here to, to start a network and to actually start helping people out there who, who don't have, don't enjoy the same luxuries that we do of being independent. E either that's my role moving forward or this isn't for me. And here's the thing, all at once it kind of hit me. Yeah. And I had to take some time, I hope you understand, to, to really pray and, 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 and contemplate this. And it, it hit me. After all of these years, even after all this time, after all of you have voted with mm -hmm. your dollar, mm -hmm and your viewership and your support. You've shown what's possible in supporting this, the largest, uh, the largest show in the conservative movement, bar, bar none, bar none, just to be clear. And I don't often advertise that. Yeah, he might be bigger than Shapiro, that. maybe. I want the content to speak for itself. I don't think so, but maybe. But I, I also don't realize think that so. you need to understand you're a no, part of something so. bigger than maybe you realize. It's the biggest show in the movement, bar none. The last election night on Rumble, bigger numbers than any mainstream show on YouTube. That's significant, that's you. Now, while I'm grateful and humble, false humility doesn't, it does you a disservice. Because Shapiro is, like, even, but even syndicated on radio, too, right? after all this time, after all of you voted too, with right? your dollar, with your viewership, with your support, after you've set records, it wasn't, and it's not, I should say, in the present tense, it's not that the suits in charge of these places, Big Con and these sites, these media companies, it's not that they still believe that this show can't work. It's not that they any longer believe that you don't exist. Those at the top, those pulling the strings in Big Con, are bothered precisely by the fact that you do. Wow. They don't want a group of rebellious rabble-rousers who want to learn, fight like hell, and laugh together. You're of no value if you can't all be kept in line to some degree. I don't mean some master plan to eliminate you. Just subdue you a little bit. Just soften your edges a little bit. Just play ball a little more. So we can keep our content all monetized. And keep having cocktails with those in charge of big tech. They want you to do that. And they're forcing many of the people you watch to do that. Wow. I can't do that. That's cringe, bro. I can't do that. And I'm willing to bet that most of you watching right now can't do that. But okay, you know what? No. Oh. Let, me, let me rephrase. We won't Of course do that, I could. But we won't. Of course I could do that. We're not going to. I won't. I won't do that. And I'm willing to bet that most of you won't either. Let me know just how many of you won't. Enter in your email at stopbigcon.com. Now, Make sure to buy a mug. I just need some time to figure out how to do this. Um, the requirement for infrastructure is light years beyond what we would need for just this show. Uh, some time to solve this puzzle as to how I can best and most efficiently accommodate you. And hopefully uh, some time to restore my faith in a movement which frankly has been um, my faith shaken has been, by some. Not yeah. all. There are a lot of good people in this movement, but some really bad actors mm -hmm. uh, among us. And rather than throw anyone under the bus or mm -hmm. continue this long, drawn-out drama playing out in the public square, mm -hmm. I'd rather focus on how to serve you the only people who truly matter in this movement and to this company, and I would say to the future of this country, you, the average American who's watching, not the person who's creating the content and framing the contracts, you, right now, at home, in your car, in your mm -hmm. truck, wherever you are, mm -hmm. hands on the wheel. So in the interim, as I figure this out, uh, pardon my dust, I'll still be on my social media pages. The silence is, is, is over now. I know I've been uh, sort, of, uh, sort of gone to, to, to radio silence. Um, I'll still be doing stand-up shows that you can always check out at uh, blackwithcutter.com slash tour. I'll actually probably do some more of those. I think I'm in Kentucky uh, February 10th. You can go and check it out. Um, I may even upload the occasional video. I don't know. Also, you know, I don't really do a lot of press. The last time I did it was I think the Vox Apocalypse because I just do this show. And for the first time in a while, I'll make myself available. I'll talk about this. 
So anyone who wants, anyone who wants to learn more, anyone who has the balls to talk about this, as, isn't afraid from the backlash of maybe not getting the guests from the people who want to try and pinch us. Uh, you can send an email to media at louderwithcrowder.com. I'm sending your inquiries here. I'll, I'll make myself available to talk about this. Now, if if we are going to keep doing this, we need yeah. to do it right. And I need to do this in a way that does right by you, because you are the future of this country. You are the catalyst for change, not some major media company, not some guy in a boardroom figuring out ways to sell you more reverse mortgages, gold or fucking pocket catheters. It's you. It's always been you. Those in big con would do well to not lose sight of that. Okay. So I, I want to be clear. Make no mistake. The liberals out there foaming at the mouth, this is not me turning against conservatism or an incident of friendly fire at all. This is me defending conservatism. Everything that I've ever stood for, I'm, I'm standing for now. It's precisely because I believe what I say that I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. And by the way, too many of these people aren't our friends. True. So this is the last call. For alcohol. To those conservative <laughs> businesses. Reference. And on the big con. You have a chance. Join me in making this right. You know you've lost your way. It's never too late to correct the course. We can all work together and fix this. It doesn't have, it doesn't have to be this way. It doesn't have to be this way. There's no reason that it is this way. I don't, I don't know why. I've tried to get an answer. I don't understand it. It doesn't have to be this way. Let's all reset and do it right. And if not, hey, I'll do it without you. And Mug Club is coming for all of it. The viewers and the talent. Wow. Now, to so everyone else, beautiful. everyone who's watched, listened, paid attention in any way, um, either right now or throughout the years, I just ask that you join me in letting them know that there are far more of us far more of you than of them. Demand change, demand better, be a signatory. That's what this is. It's not just entering in your email. It's, it's letting these people know at Big Con that you want something different, that you require better. Because you know what? I am going to march into these people's offices, these nameless, faceless people's offices with your declaration and the number of you who exist. Those in Big Con are personally going to know just how many of you are equally pissed. You and the number of you out there are officially going to be their report card. Not a handful of old money billionaires, not career political and nonprofit lobbyists. Mm -hmm. You. Thank you. You're a signatory. This is their report card. And all of you are the reckoning. Ooh. And if enough of you draft me. The reckoning. Fine. That's what I'll the be fuck I want to hear. Otherwise, what are we doing here? Hell yes. StopBigCon.com. Please enter in your email. Comment below. Hit the like. All of that because it helps the algorithm. And you make sure that they see this. And stay tuned. Steven Crowder's contract is um, now outed. It is outed by the Daily Wire as coming from the Daily Wire. So we'll talk about that contract uh, and what they have to say about it and kind of weigh the two, th I mean, you get to weigh them together and make up your own mind. I'll give you my opinion, of course, and uh, no one should ever adopt my opinion as their own unless they definitely agree. And if you agree with everything I say, you're probably retarded because I am. And that's fine. $50 million, $50 million. The funny thing is, we're going to talk about that 50 million figure um, and the figures around it as we get into it, because I, I think it's important to put in perspective what that actually is. All right. Our friend Stephen Crowder has launched a new initiative called Stop Big Con. And in the video announcing the launch of the project, he talked about leaving the blaze and all the different offers that he filled it from other conservative organizations. And what he thought were the real problems nice. with those offers. Nice. Rewatch it and twice. We really talked about one offer. A lot of people to speculate about whether or not the Daily Wire is one of the people who made him an offer. In particular, are we the ones who made the offer uh, that he put up on the screen and talked about um, at length? And the answer is yes, that offer did come from the Daily Wire. Uh, 
Okay, so we asked this question yesterday. I'm not going to pause it too much, and I'm going to try and talk fast. Yes, it's confirmed now. This is the Daily Wire, straight from the co-CEO's mouth, that not only did they make an offer, but they made the particular offer that Steven Crowder was talking about. This is kind of the right move to come out and just own it, I think, because it was pretty clear that uh, Crowder would produce the receipts and, and out the Daily Wire eventually if they tried to, like, weasel around it. So this is the right thing for them to do, although I think it's the wrong tack. I think they should say, you know what? We actually agree. Uh, we actually agree with the principle behind Stop Big Con. And um, you know what? We're taking his feedback under uh, consideration. We have some disagreements about it, and there's some aspects of it. But let's honestly go through this contract. Now, maybe he says this. Wait, he's, yeah, he's wait. Why the f*** would you, <laughs> why would you stop to say, <laughs> just listen to it for a little bit, no? should say you know what we have this opportunity as uh, a powerhouse in the conservative industry to be leaders in this and we love to partner with crowder on creating a better system and we like his stop big con movement and the idea that we're going to foster a community of creators in this space i think that might have been the better pr move than whatever he's about to say but i don't even know what he's about to say i just have a feeling it's not what i said right now that's what I would have done. And again, you can still take issue and you can clarify things to try and do it. But owning the fact that the and, and this is not limited to conservative uh, media, OK, that media contracts in general and a lot of contracts in general start off predatory, especially when there's big money on one end and, and maybe a non-sophisticated party on the other well, things to try and do it. But owning the fact that the and, and this is not limited to conservative uh, media, OK, that media contracts in general and a lot of contracts in general start off predatory, especially when there's big money on one end and, and maybe a non-sophisticated party on the other. Now, in this case, I, predatory is a really loaded word there. I would say favorable to the issuing party. Any contract in any business is going to start off with favorable terms towards the person issuing the contract. That's true. To say that they all start off predatory, that's so unbelievably loaded. I don't think that's fair. She had Steven Crowder, who is a very sophisticated party. He's been negotiating contracts like this since 2009. That's a pretty fucking long time. But other creators are not. And so starting with a predatory premise in your contract from one of the big uh, people in the movement, that is a problem. Like that principle itself is a problem in conservative media and we don't have to do business this way. This is the most important thing that you get in some of your classes in law school, particularly your legal drafting classes, is the fucking contract bullshit that we're all used to seeing. We go, well, that's just because some lawyer did this. You don't have to write contracts this way. Contracts don't have to be. This is such a, I'd be really curious to hear. He's asking for like friend, friendly contracts. I, this feels like, I don't want to accuse him of being like politically partisan, but it's knowing who he is and the type of character he is that he would say that like, guys, when you write a contract, this is your friend. You got to write him nice terms. Don't be mean. That's your friend. Like. Bro, we've got like seven or, or, or no, we've got like eight or nine figures worth of dollars on the line here. Like, fuck friendship. There's like hundreds of people's jobs at stake. There's like tons of money at stake. There's like the future success of your business at stake. Like, if this was like, if you're like cutting a deal, like I could pay you like $500 for your art because you're my friend. I could give you like $1,000 for it. Okay, fine. You pay a little bit more for some friendship. Yeah, sure. That's cool. But when we're talking about cutting up like 50 to $100 million contracts, like, Bro, you're not going to get friend terms in this. Like, these are big businesses negotiating against each other. Like, I don't know. That just seems... It just seems weird that he would take this angle, but... 80 page monstrosities with different provisions for every time someone farts into a microphone, Ethan Ralph. They don't have to do that. The reason they do that is because they start with a predatory premise and force you to come in and negotiate shit away because they want to be able to have leverage over you. And they think by having a list of insane things in there that you'll come in and negotiate out that that will reduce the amounts of other places where you leverage because your brain 
thinks, well, if I'm negotiating this and this and this, I probably can't negotiate as hard here, here, and here. That's the psychological game that's being- No. This guy makes a lot of money. I, I'm, I don't understand. I, I would have to talk to him. Like psychological games and blah, blah, blah. Like this isn't like YouTube children negotiating machinima contracts. These are real business people negotiating eight to nine figure deals. Um, get a lawyer. Like you should be adept at navigating these conversations. You shouldn't be wandering in here getting psychologically trapped on somebody that is like talking about contracts that are in the, the, the almost the quarter billion dollar range, like 50 to 100 plus million dollars, depending on where you're going with this. Um, I, I just, I feel like, I don't, I'm not a, I'm, I don't want to accuse him of being partisan, but that's such a weird thing. Like, well, if they write you a really unfavorable contract, maybe you're going to be too scared to ask for something else. Okay, well then eat shit. What are you, bro? We're talking $100 million contracts. You're going to be scared to ask for more? Then eat shit. You're not cut out for this world. That sounds mean, but like, get a lawyer. <laughs> like, that's what you're supposed to do here. That's just, out, that's outrageous to me that he would... Like, yeah, you, like, what, the Daily Wire is, what, 250 employees, jobs on the line, Steven Crowder? I'm sure Crowder pays probably anywhere from, what, 10 to 30 people that work with him? Like, there's a lot of people on the line here, like. Being played, and it doesn't have to be. There's no- It does have to be, though, because if you're not trying to fuck over the other person, and you run into people that are trying to fuck you over, then you're gonna fuck yourself by putting out more than favorable terms, right? That's how contract negotiations work. You're not gonna give everything right up front because if you run into an aggressive actor on the other end, you're fucking yourself over so many times. Like, why would you do that? There's just no incentive. These aren't like little little boy, like, these aren't little like 15 year olds signing machinima contracts. These are big business contracts. These are huge deals. No reason for it to be. And if we're going to be collaborative and if we're going to build a space as sort of an alliance, an alliance of, uh, you know, they're competing businesses, but we compete in the Randian way, the free market capitalist way, the way that says- Yeah, he's, this is, damn, fuck. I don't, Never mind. I, fuck, I feel like I can't say anything, or it's gonna come off as really mean. He, like, he sounds like a guy, he makes a lot of money. He's a really successful guy, but he sounds like a guy that makes like 30,000 a year on YouTube, and it's like, guys, we gotta work together to build stuff. We need to work together, and we're gonna make a good space where we're gonna be like Ayn Rand, the Randy and free market. Like, dog, again, there's 300 jobs on the line. There's 50 to a quarter billion dollars of, of money being talked about here. This is like big boy shit. Like, not like, not like, what would Ayn Rand have us do, guys? We gotta cooperate. Like, that's, that's just, just wild to me. I don't believe he would be, I, if, if there were leftists fighting, I don't believe he would be approaching this this way. But maybe he would be, he might be. This is, just sounds wild to me. I don't understand. I don't understand this at all. We're going to compete based on merit and based on talent, and we're going to help you be better because we're better than you are now, and so you'll want to beat us next time. That's the type of spirited competition that builds industries. And we can start there instead of starting with this very, very adversarial process and hoping that the predatory nature of what we're doing uh, kind of drowns out their negotiating options. You can go two ways. I would have gone the other way, but I'm, I'm that kind of guy. And no, I don't ever fucking stop talking. If you don't like the commentary, just go masturbate to the video by yourself instead of masturbating to my words. Okay? Fuck off. I'm not trying to hide that fact. I'm not ashamed of that fact. In fact, I think it's a very good offer. Um, but I think there's a lot of sort of misconceptions about the nature of the offer, the nature of the points. I think Stephen misunderstood a lot of the points. And so Ooh, the way we do here at The Daily Wire, we're just going to be incredibly transparent. You know that we like to have our members be a part of the journey. We live stream all of our company town halls, for example. Part of we the just find journey. That, you know, sunlight sometimes is, is the best disinfectant. And so with that in mind, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, how we came to be in conversations with Stephen, um, how those conversations ended, and and walk you just line by line through what the actual document that we sent over to him, a non-binding uh, term sheet, what it actually said and why. First thing you should know is that uh, I'm really miserable to be making this video. Stephen's been my friend for uh, 10 years. I think he's maybe the most talented person working in the conservative uh, media space. He's, he's one of the top. Then why did you kind of send him a shit offer? And 
I know he's gonna say, well, this is only a first offer with no negotiation. If he's a friend that you've had for 10 years and he's the most talented guy in the industry, why are you starting from a shit premise? Why are you doing that? Up entertainers in the country. Because it's, because it's your, your, you've got other people's jobs that you're representing. Fuck a friend. Like, yeah, he might be a friend and that's like cool and shit, but bro, you're not representing a friend that you wanna have come do a fucking collab on your little Twitch stream. Right? You're talking about cutting major fucking deals that's gonna impact a lot of people's jobs. And it's gonna influence your company's ability to navigate these spaces in the future. I don't know why you're expecting a special, super cute, like, friend deal. Like, you're gonna go into the like, tunnel with a bunch of Care Bears. And, uh, like, uh, it's just such a weird expectation. Especially from somebody like Rikita, who I feel like is a very, like, kinda cutthroat, like, this is how the fucking world is, guys. We gotta fucking learn to navigate it, don't be a dipshit, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's such a wild take from him. Country politics notwithstanding, a great, uh, comic voice, and uh, I find it really tragic that we're having this kind of a conversation. Um, but it's also very important, I think, that that we talk about it, uh, in particular because I know a lot of people who are fans of the Daily Wire were really offended by the things that Stephen said in the video, and they're concerned that maybe we're doing the wrong thing. And I think that by the time we finish this are video, you concerned? you'll understand what we were thinking with our uh, with our term sheet and how we operate as a business a little bit better. I've wanted to be in business with Steven since the day that I met him. Uh, ben and I tried to do some even movie deals with Steven before there was a uh, CRTV and before there was uh, a Daily Wire. For that entire time, we've talked at length at various times about getting together and doing things. Of course, for most of that time, he's been under contract first at CRTV. He's not saying that the language is predatory. He's noting that the nature of the provisions themselves in the contract are written under the premise of a cynical mindset in contract negotiations, and therefore unproductive and unnecessary. That's what the point of a contract is, dog. If you want to approach somebody in good faith and you assume anything, you know, then don't write a contract. What do you fucking think a contract is for? A contract basically says, listen, I want to engage in a business deal with you, but if you fuck me over, these are the ways that I'm going to get punitive. These are the ways that I'm going to hold you accountable. Or not even punitive. These might just be ways that I dock your fee. But contracts exist to protect me in case you want to fuck me over. That's the whole point of what a contract is. And if you're a good person and a good friend, then you engage in those conversations in good faith. He's like, yeah, I understand 100%. Right? You're gonna pay me, I'm gonna work for you. Let's hammer out the deal. Let's get the boundary set up 100% because I do like you and I'm gonna function in as good faith as possible and I assume you will as well. We're gonna get these contracts exactly as we want them and then we'll go from there. Like, And then at the blaze, so we weren't able to and you know, we're, from time to time during the years we would uh, get together and daydream a little bit about would there be a future for us to work together at the other end of that deal. We got word that Steven uh, was finishing up his time at the Blaze and was interested in having a conversation with us. And so we reached out to his agent and we said, listen, we'd, we'd love to have a conversation. It's not every day that a monster talent like Steven comes on the market. Uh, it'd be probably, we'd be bad businessmen if we didn't engage in a conversation with him. We weren't sure at that time if there was a deal to be had. I mean, for one thing, we're friends with uh, Glenn, we're friends with Tyler, we're friends with all the guys at the Blaze. We didn't, we weren't sure that we wanted to commit to making an offer to Steven, and you know, Why? Steven's an expensive talent. I mean, he's been in the business a long time. He has an enormous fan base, and we knew that it would take a lot of doing to get him over to the Daily Wire. This at the same time that we're investing very heavily in kids' entertainment content and uh, making you know real television content, streaming uh, scripted fiction like The Pendragon Cycle and Atlas Shrugged and other projects that we've taken on. Would we have the resources? We weren't sure, but again, Wait, you have to have the conversation. Did they do Atlas Shrugged, that three-part we movie? We were happy to have it. So. We reach out to the talking about? agent and we say that. We say, you know, we'd like to have a conversation with Stephen, kind of get into the details of you know, what's he looking for, what's he looking for financially, what's he looking for in terms of structure, uh, what would make his life better, what would make him happy. You know, he's, he's got this opportunity now to have a next chapter. What's he want that next chapter to be? Uh, and Stephen's agent candidly just wasn't interested in any aspect of that conversation. <laughs> he only wanted to know about the money. He said, you yeah. know, we're not going to have a conversation. We're what gonna do you have some mean? Abstract yeah. Talk. Dude, he's, hold on, this guy's dick riding hard. What do you mean, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean, yeah? I thought you just said, no, it's supposed to be all about friendship and making a good faith offer and working together as like nice people. What, why are you saying like, <laughs> yeah, of course he's only interested for the money. Why is he one, Why is he 180 in here? Did I miss something? And Steven's agent candidly just wasn't interested in any aspect of that conversation. <laughs> he only wanted to know about the money. He said, you yeah. know. We're not gonna have a- This guy is like suggesting all the shit that Nick initially said. That like, oh, you should be nice and have a conversation about what you guys wanna do, blah, 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 blah. And then when the other guy's like, oh, I just care about the money. He's like, oh, well, yeah, of course you should only care about the money. Conversation, we're not gonna have some abstract talk. We're gonna send us an offer. Tell us how much money yes. you're willing to pay. Yep. And he gave us an indication of what the minimum number would have to be 
in order to even have a discussion with Stephen. And it's a big number. He did you a favor. So we talked about it internally, and, and we decided, yeah, we should oh my do that. God. We should send over uh, an, an opening offer, okay. a, a non-binding term sheet that takes a stab at what we think that, that minimum number is going to be to get the conversation started so that we can sit down with Stephen so that we can see if uh, if there's a deal that would be good for him and good for us. And, and that's what we did. We, we put together the term sheet, we sent it over, uh, and we asked if we could get on the phone and have a conversation with Stephen. I'm going to walk you through. Okay. Uh, again, non-binding term sheet. They're they're given. He it, he seemed to double speak there. I don't know if you guys caught it, but he seemed to indicate that the agent gave him an idea of what that number would be, and then they came up with a number of what that number would be and sent it, which tells me that the agent told them a number and they went lower than the number. So they're already- You don't know that. They might have given a good number, but the terms weren't okay. The whole point of a contract is balancing terms and number. It's never about just the number. If you give me a $50 million contract to fucking jerk off for a day, like I'll do it. If you give me a $50 million contract to go and like murder the entire fucking nation of Canada, I'm probably not going to accept that. Like just the number, it doesn't mean anything. In my opinion, I don't know if this is true. It's just the way he said it. It was kind of a weird wording and phrasing of it, but it sounds like they went, okay, that's that's their, that's where they're going to say, which is going to be high. So we're going to come in a little bit lower and then we'll probably meet somewhere in the middle. Not only is this, not only is this a bad analysis, it's actually contrary to what we've already got so far because my understanding is, unless I wasn't paying attention or missed it, I didn't hear Crowder complain about the number at all. Crowder didn't complain about the number. I thought Crowder complained about the terms. So it's just, I don't know, just weird. <clears throat> but if the agent says, look, we're not talking under $70 million over four years or whatever. We're not talking less than less than $20 million a year. And they come in with 50 million over four years with some, maybe some incentive or whatever. I'm not, I'm not sure what the total is. I've only heard kind of rumors about it. But if they come in below the number, then they don't want to come to the fucking table. Like if someone says, look, our minimum, our minimum entry is here. That might be the minimum entry, especially if you're friends, especially if you're colleagues, like especially, and they know who Crowder is, right? Like Crowder is going to make this money. You don't, n oh man. Wait, this is actually like so disappointing. This is like juvenile. I feel like I'm watching a, I feel like I'm watching like a, I don't know, what, I don't know. I don't know what I'm watching right now. This is just silly, I guess, I don't know. Whether Daily Wire does it or not. And it might be that Crowder would join Fox. I, I don't think so, but the, hypothetically, or uh, OAN, I really don't think so. But hypothetically, you know, there could be a competing offer on the table for someone like Steven Crowder. You don't know. So they shot their shot and it was low. That seems to be the indication I'm getting. It's, Crowder thinks it's low. If the money was higher, maybe. But it might not just be low because of the number, it might be low because of those other terms that are automatically going to reduce the number. And one of those terms that they know is gonna reduce the number is him being demonetized on YouTube, which has already happened. So whatever offer they put on the table, when they have that 25% off thing, that 25% is going to be coming off of that offer immediately because he's already demonetized. Yeah, but again, obviously, that's something that they would probably work out in negotiations, right? Which the guy will go on to say in this video that of course they would do that. So you gotta take whatever and knock a quarter off of it. And if you don't think their lawyers are going to argue that that 25% discount is is coming out of the fee immediately, you're insane. I've, I've heard some people say, well, the, you know, the, it, it was already off, so he wouldn't lose the 25%. No, he'll lose the 25%, and if he ever gets re-monetized, he would get that 25% tacked back on. That you have no idea. You just, you just can't know that. There's just, you don't know that. It's totally baseless. That's how their lawyers would argue that in a contract dispute, and it would happen right away, because his payment would be 25% lower than possible. Um, Randall G Gully says, so if your ex-wife passed and you were trying to get her death certificate to get your children's passport, 
How do you get that? The county clerk won't give it to me since I'm not the husband. You would have to probably ask uh, an, an existing relative who would, who would get that from you or who, who would get that to you. Uh, but there really should be a way for you to get a death certificate from the county clerk. I'm surprised they won't give it to you at all. But uh, the other way, you could check with, you, you may just have to check with uh, a, a probate and a state lawyer in your, in your jurisdiction. Um, that, would, that would be the best way. Find out how you can go about requesting it. Uh, Gage M says, hello, Mr. Ricada, big fan since Rittenhouse trial. Hey, thank you. My birthday is today, Thursday. I'm toasting to you and hope I can get a toast back. Turning 24 and I'm pretty happy. Yeah, Gage, I got you. Oh man, I bought new liquor today, but I left it upstairs. Real quick, let's uh, let's get a little toast going for Gage. Everybody who feels like it, wish Gage a happy birthday. 24 is a cool year, I think. I don't know. I like I like birthdays. I like getting older in general. Every year feels a little bit more interesting to me. Gage, happy birthday. A big toast to you, 24. Look, you're not quite old enough to rent a car, I think. That's still 25. But... Uh, you're old enough to be cooler than the people who just started drinking. Enjoy life. May your uh, careers and uh, travels be fruitful beyond your wildest imaginations. But it may take some time. Enjoy the time it does take, though. Learn everything you can and apply it to everything you do. Cheers, Gage. Happy birthday, buddy. Wow. Ehef says, I don't touch myself to your words. I touch myself to your face. Ooh, <laughs> well, I have to I have to talk a little bit hotter then. Kyle Bogue says, I was a Daily Wire subscriber for a year. I'd like the Daily Wire even more if this dude was more of a silent partner. Also, it's good to be able to catch a show for a change. Great show as always. Hey, thanks, Kyle. Uh, looking forward to spring, buddy. I'm, I'm driving the Mustang over and we're going to play some fucking golf. Mongo5817, Big Con is beholden to their sponsors and not their audience. This guy is pissing on us and telling us it's raining. Wait, All right, here we go. What's happening here? That document, what it says, what it doesn't say, some of how Stephen represented it. I'm sure he feels like he was being accurate, but some of the things that he said are simply not true uh, based on the text. And, and We'll see. Let's base know, it on Stephen's the text. a very passionate guy. I think that he's... Uh, we read the text that Crowder was reading, so it'd be kind of interesting to see where Crowder was wrong on, maybe he's saying on other inferences that are in there, but the, the text that Crowder put on the page is pretty straightforward, and I don't think his assessment was wrong. Uh, doing his level best to stand against what he sees as an injustice, but uh, there is no injustice in this document, as I think you'll see. Mm. And then I'll tell you what happened right after we sent the document, when I finally did get on the phone uh, with Stephen. So first, Here's the document, the non-binding confidential term sheet. I'm just going to walk you through it, full transparency. This non-binding term sheet sets forth the basic deal points of a proposed content production and distribution agreement between the Daily Wire LLC, the Texas Limited Liability Company, and Stephen Crowder via his loan out, uh, so that if and when the parties elect to move forward with a long-form agreement, they can move quickly in preparing a definitive and binding agreement. That's just legalese that means uh, this is just a conversation. Okay. So yeah, it's just a conversation. I'm guessing he's going to go through this, but here we can see fee is $50 million for the initial term, which is four years. And then $25 million for every two-year renewal at Daily Wire's sole discretion. So Daily Wire can choose to renew the contract or not after the four years for half the term, half the money. Makes sense. Uh, there's no built-in increase, which you would probably negotiate a built-in increase if you're going to have that renewal term in there. But, you know, for now... I think this is uh, this is fair, or you you negotiate some sort of thing in there. But this is it. So you're looking at uh, what fifty million dollars over four years is what twelve and a half million dollars a year, right? Do we have any idea? Do we have any idea how many Mug Club subscribers there are and how much Mug Club costs? How much does Mug Club cost? Mug Club cost. Mug Club is still on uh, Blaze TV. Hundred bucks a year. Hundred bucks a year. Okay, so if he has three hundred thousand, I'm seeing times one hundred dollars a year. That's thirty million dollars a year. My understanding is under the fee agreement that goes to Daily Wire. 
So now I know it's not going to be that that flat because there's you know there's incentives. Some people are saying it's eighty bucks a year with the sale. Let's but three hundred thousand. Let's say it's fifty bucks a year. You're at fifteen million dollars a year. So even at half price, he's already just from Mug Club alone over the Daily Wire yearly thing. It's only expected. Wait, is he saying he is? It's one hundred dollars a year. That's thirty million dollars a year. Blake Club is still on. Uh, Blaze TV, hundred bucks a year. Hundred bucks a year. Okay, so if he has three hundred thousand, I'm seeing times three hundred thousand subscribers. Where is he getting that number from? One hundred dollars a year. That's thirty million dollars a year. Yeah, because I thought Crowder said he didn't. He didn't even have a figure because he didn't even know because the Blaze or whatever didn't tell him. My understanding is under the fee agreement that goes to Daily Wire. So. Now I know that's what the Daily Wire guy said he had. I thought the Daily Wire guy said that when he asked him for that number, Crowder didn't even know the number. What are you saying? It's not going to be that that flat because there's you know there's incentives. Some people are saying it's eighty bucks a year with the sale. Let's but three hundred thousand. Let's say it's fifty bucks a year. You're at fifteen million dollars a year. So even at half price, he's already just from Mug Club alone over the Daily Wire yearly thing. It's only expected to go up. His mug club memberships are not expected to drop dramatically. So we've already got a problem. And this is probably where the conversation started with the amount of money that would be required to even have the conversation with Crowder. You've got to out earn mug club or you've got to get me to mug club or slightly below with some reasonable level of security that mug club doesn't offer me. These are the types of things that you're asking questions on. Why would Crowder negotiate his salary down $7 million a year? Like, why would he do that? Like, what? why is that? Why would we expect him to? Now, maybe he would if something was worth that to him. But Crowder but didn't I negotiate I mean, down anything. He didn't negotiate at all. We have to figure out what he's getting out of that. Now, when you also figure in all your merch is gone, like his merch sales and, and merch sales for Crowder are probably a decent chunk of money. I don't know how great they are, but like my merch sales always sucked, but my merch always sucked because I designed it and I suck at designing merch. Crowder's got good people designing merch. So now you're talking about taking away that extra stuff and you're talking about taking away one time uh, ticketing events and stuff like that. So we're already, I'm already seeing a problem here, but he is saying this is a non-binding, this is an introductory sort of offer, okay? And an introductory, here, let's get to a conversation. Here's what we're kind of expecting thing. Mm -hmm. But if this wasn't enough, this is just Crowder saying, fuck off. And he can do that. He's big enough to do it. That's, but that's not what he did. Stephen Fr I said that at the beginning. If Crowder says like, this isn't good enough, I don't even want to consider this, then that's fine. He's within his rights to do so. I said that in the beginning, he can totally do that. That's totally fair, but that's not what he did. He wanted to blow these guys up saying that they were being like predators and shit on social media, being predatory, I should say, which I think is significantly over the line for what's appropriate, but he's doing it because he wants to drum up. Um, he just wants to drum up more subs for his mug club. Frost says, I think the biggest problem between Daily Wire and Crowder is that it seems Crowder wants a host where Daily Wire wants a partner. Skyrim96 says, but this isn't a partnership agreement. Um, if if Crowder, like, oh, I, I, yeah, if Daily Wire wanted a partner, they would bring him in with profit sharing. That would be the trick uh, there. And and Crowder, if if Crowder wants a host, then, you know, these terms are just going to be all wrong. Owning his social media, owning his merch sales, owning stuff like that is not going to be useful to him. Skyrim96, from what I've seen so far, he's missing the point. It wasn't about the money. It was about the Daily Wire not going against big tech. That was the point from what my knowledge, uh, when's the last time Ben has had a strike? And this has been something I've been seeing lately. 
when has Daily Wire been in danger with YouTube and big tech? They don't seem to have any danger problems there. They don't seem to talk about any content. The last time I remember Ben Shapiro uh, being a, a problem with, um, with anything remotely close to big tech was Berkeley, right? And that's not big tech. That's, that's big edu, big dot edu. But uh, when the Battle of Berkeley, I think that was Shapiro, wasn't it? Where they refused to let him speak or whatever. But it's been a couple years since I've heard of Ben Shapiro being canceled from an engagement. Now, maybe I'm wrong because I don't pay that much attention. Mega Panda over on Rumble says, a metro, uh, a metapolitical initiative, initiative based on peaceful and lawful activism against indoctrination and grooming of children. Please check it out. Project 171 official on Twitter. 18 plus gets rid of us. Is there a reason that these contracts don't start with RevShare included? Because most creators, in my personal experience, maybe this is different in some parts of the world, most creators don't want RevShare. You don't want, fuck RevShare. You want cash up front. You want to know what you're getting, right? If somebody wants to buy me out or sign me to some platform, I'm going to argue for, right, I want like $5 million. I don't want a 5x or 5% rev share, blah, blah, blah. Now, some people in other industries might be different, but I think from what I've heard generally in entertainment, generally what you push for is um, you push for a contract up front. That's why people make a big deal when like, um, was it Harrison Ford or who, who was the guy that like got like part of the Star Wars toys or whatever or money from like the toy shit? Um, and people are like, oh, that was so smart to do that because people don't normally do that. That's not traditionally what happens. You, you don't want RevShare because you don't know how they're going to run the company. There's a whole bunch of shit outside your control. Whereas if somebody says like, oh, like this is what you're going to get paid. This is your flat fee. Then you're like, oh, cool. I'm signing a you know $10 million contract. I know what I'm getting. Boom, boom. Oh, maybe it was George Lucas. I don't remember. I don't know who did it. but Okay. I don't know what exactly that means, but... Uh, people can check that out if they want. Kyoto says, Daily Wire has Jeremy's investors got to feed with the consistent re or with consistent revenue from ads on big tech. Their brand is inoffensive to 35-year-old suburban white women. Bad fit for viewer-centric Crowder. And Nunya Business says, hey, Nick, I sent you a PM on Twitter about my situation. My niece set up a Give, Send, Go campaign for me. I don't use Facebook, and my Twitter seems to only have uh, sub bots as followers seems to um, I'm just looking for a little bit of help okay I'll try and find that Let, we got to get into this content here pairing a definitive and binding agreement that's just legalese that means uh, this is just a conversation starter and we're obviously going to have a negotiation uh, if we move forward and a lot of these points are going to get beat up and for those of you who have never been through a contract negotiation then, well, that's how it works when you, when you send someone an offer you don't send them uh, everything that you're willing to say yes to because there is going to be a negotiation because agents and lawyers are going to get involved because you can't read their mind and you don't know everything that will be important to them and everything that they'll want. You don't know even, you know, some of their sort of non-negotiable uh, points. And so you send over. But what you learn in negotiation is that it is like a, the most effective negotiations are collaborative processes. And when you start at the hostile part and you guys are this far apart to start, you have a much harder time getting to the middle where people are playing games and trying to fool each other. You've already said that Crowder's been your friend for 10 years. You've been wanting to work with him forever. Why are you starting here and, th and thinking he's starting here when you could start here and have him be here and come to the middle? You seem, uh, again, you're, you're talking as if, you're talking as if he's your friend, but at the same time talking as if he's an adverse party that you're trying to take over with the least amount of pain for your company, but you're willing to come way up, start higher. Open with that, say, hey, we're not fucking around here. We don't wanna, we don't wanna screw you, we like you, you know you're big, you know we're the biggest conservative media outlet out there, we've got some of the real powerhouses, we've got Walsh, we've got Knowles, we've got Ben Shapiro, and adding a Crowder would really round out, uh, round out our lineup with bringing in new people to Daily Wire who might not otherwise jive with our rather stuffy content. We want that sort of edgier comedic aspect to it. So let's not fuck around. Let's not fight each other. We're collaborative here. Let's go for it. You can do this. This works in negotiation when negotiations can be friendly and when the other party is honest. Both of these guys are presenting themselves as honest dealers and I think that's fair. I think Daily Wire should be an honest dealer and I think Crowder would be an honest dealer with them, especially if they're actually friends unless they're just unless they're just blowing smoke for the viewers on this thing. And I don't think that that's what Jeremy Boring's doing here. Uh, not a lizard person says, Rogan makes 50 million a year from Spotify, has 195 million premium subs. Daily Wire, 900,000 subs, offered Crowder 12 and a half million per year. 
25% of Rogan for the initial offer averaged across YouTube, Twitter, uh, across Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook. Crowder has 34%, 0.4% of Joe Rogan's reach. I think the offer was fair. You can think the offer is fair. I don't because it looks like Crowder makes more money than the offer already and the offer You're would making eliminate big assumptions, the money that he though. makes. And if he uh, is, again, his, uh, he could like negotiate that. But you can think it's fair. Uh, I just don't. For a, a loose offer. And then they're going to beat it up a little bit. They're going to say, well, this should be higher and this should be lower. And you're going to come back and say, no, we're going to stand firm here, but we're willing to compromise there. What's up, Lewis? And over time, you either get to a deal or you don't get to a deal. But that, that's how a good faith negotiation always works. No, 100% it's not. of every nope. uh, interaction I've ever had with any talent, that's the process. That's a shit process. I mean, you can call it what you want, Chief, but at 250 employees... Is the Daily Wire bigger than the Blaze? Does anybody know? The Daily Wire might be like the largest alternative media. Are they even alternative media at this point? Like how big is the Wire? Is there, how, can I Google this? Um, the Wire versus the Blaze, who's big? What, what are the Blaze's top talents? Like, like the Blaze is like Glenn Beck and shit, but I feel like the Daily Wire's gotta be bigger. So, so I, I don't know, like, I don't know where, no offense again, like, I don't know where you get off, like, being like, oh, you got a shit process. I mean, it seems like whatever process they have is working really fucking well. That's what it seems like. Seems like the process is working pretty well for the company, like, The Daily Wire, Wire reveals, for, uh, reveals, I'm sorry, The Daily Wire for the first time reveals the size of its paid subscriber base, 600,000 subscribers. I bet they farmed a lot off of the, um, that Ma the Matt Walsh documentary, What is a Woman? Because I saw that shit getting pushed so hard on like my Facebook ads and everything. Jesus. 600,000 paid subs. Um, the Daily Wire subscription. I wonder what... I wonder how much these memberships cost. Eight a month, 12 a month, 14 a month. We'll assume that 10 a month is the average because there's probably most of their people are in the insider between the insider and the all access. So that's six million a year in revenue from, no, I'm sorry. That's six million a month in revenue um, from just subscribers not including how much they make off of selling ads and everything because i'm pretty sure they're like you said their shit isn't demonetized and i know sh um, benny boy does ad reads i believe and everything too like jesus that's a shit process but, but like i've negotiated friendlier divorces than that shit yeah, because a divorce is, you can afford to be friendly in a divorce. There's only two people involved and maybe kids. Of course you're going to be able to negotiate a friendlier divorce. There's not hundreds of jobs and a fucking media empire riding on the line. <laughs> like, what a weird... Fuck off. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, and so here we go. Here was our offer. A four-year initial term with two-year renewal at DW's sole discretion. That just means Stephen's going to work for DW for four years. Uh, and if it's going really well, DW can retain him for an additional two years. Two, uh, the fee. Remember, this is the, the minimum number uh, that we thought would get the conversation started with Stephen. $50 million for the initial term plus $25 million for the renewal term if extended, paid in monthly installments. Like I say... A pretty big number, uh, but we thought for a talent like Steven, this is probably the, the minimum number that's going to get get us in the door so that we can sit down and talk to him. Again, that Three, 50 million production now, costs. Uh, this is important. The 50 million sounds like a lot until you realize that Crowder probably already out earns that 50 million. We, we've never. Yeah, but like, just use your brain. They're not going to offer him less money than he's already making. Obviously. If he discloses the amount of paid subs he's getting or the country's getting, then obviously they're going to at the least match that. And they're going to they're going to come over the top, of course. Like, that's such a silly... ...made a deal quite like the offer that we put in front of Stephen because 
Stephen, very independent guy. I mean, all of our talent have very independent voices. Obviously, we can't tell them what to say. You know, Candace says what she wants, and Jordan Peterson says what he wants, Ben, Michael. Uh, but Stephen has always built in this protection for himself that, that he wants to actually produce his content. He doesn't want, you know, most of, most of our guys that come to the studio and we turn on the cameras, we point the cameras, we point the lights. Stephen likes to do that with his own team uh, to just make doubly sure that no one's interfering with his content, not that we would. And so we anticipated that and we said, Crowder will bear the burden of production, including all costs associated therewith on all the content contemplated herein except on the quarterly and annual content contemplated below. We'll, we'll get to that part. Okay, and they're just going to breeze past that. Crowder's already doing that. Crowder's already bearing the burden of the cost of his show. So they're, they're asking him to take a pay cut, and they're not even taking on production costs for him. Because we they're not going to, of course, they're not going to take on production costs if you're outsourcing your own fucking crew. What, that's just going to be included as part of your fee. No shit. If, if Twitch was to hire me to do something... Twitch is just going to pay me a fee to do it. They're not going to pay my production costs. That's just going to be part of my fee. That's just going to be part of what I bill them. We know that Crowder wants to do that. That's a very weaselly way around saying that, yeah, not only are we giving him this offer that seems lower than his Mug Club membership already brings in, but we're also not going to defray the low offer by covering production and staffing costs. That's part of that's part of his fee. This is so silly. Wait, do you think Rakita? I I do, I super don't understand this. I, I'm either I'm either just like completely out of my league, and I don't. I've only seen seven figure contracts. Right, not for me, but I've seen friends like do these negotiations and shit, and I've had other people talk to me about these. Maybe on the eight figure side, maybe it actually gets way friendlier, and people are just like, you know, they meet each other, they suck each other off, and it's like all friendly and shit. This is just this just sounds so weird to me. All of this just sounds so like juvenile. His whole approach to this, I don't understand it at all. Because we think Crowder would want that. He's always built. Hold on. But if Steven Crowder is paying for production costs, should Daily Wire still own his content when the contract ends? No, it do they don't. Let me be very clear here. Hold on. Um, hold on. The only content that Daily Wire owns is the exclusive content that Daily Wire pays to produce as part of their annual specials, which is fair. Again, if you're retained by a company or you're being paid by a company, like, hey, every like uh, every few months, once a year, we're gonna shoot like a Steven Crowder gun documentary special. They're gonna pay for all of the production costs on that. They're gonna be the ones that write and script and all of that, probably with Crowder's input. I'd imagine they'd want to because you wanna work with him because he's a good guy. Um, he's talent that you're acquiring, right? When they pay to produce that and they do that, they're gonna own that piece of content into perpetuity. Destiny, they own the content he creates while he's working for them? Wrong. That is not true. They only own the content that they're fronting the cost for. They own the content that he's creating while he's with them and his back catalog only during the term of the contract. Once the term ends, the only content that they own into perpetuity is the content that they paid to produce, which sounded like the annual specials that they wanted to do, not the content that he produces with his crew on his studio. Anybody saying different is you're wrong. Go reread the contract. I'm not gonna read it for you, okay? This isn't fucking kindergarten, okay? built that protection in. Well, building that protection in is great. Why don't you pay the staff then? Take They're not them gonna, I, okay, I'm talking to the, um, I, I, I can't, I, I actually can't listen to this. It's, this just, I'm, either I'm too stupid to follow it and now it's making me upset because I'm so stupid and it's just frustrating me as a dumb person or he is insanely hackish here. Um, I, I, I don't know which it is, but either way, it's just too frustrating for me. Fuck, never mind. I can't help it. I can't help myself. We'll do five more minutes. Fuck me. I'm on his daily wire staff or something. Agree to do that. There are ways around that. But if you're if you're giving him a lower fee than what he's already making and he's still bearing the cost of production, what incentive does he have to take the lower fee? Uh, a little bit later, it's kind of a novel concept. Uh, the quality of the production will be as good as or better than is currently existing content this just How again steven's going to produce his own content it has to be as good as the stuff uh, that steven's audience wait what did you say <laughs> wait what the production will be as good as or better than his currently existing content this just How again steven's going to produce his own content i don't think he's ever i don't think he's ever seen or been involved in these contracts before that's my only guess again that's a standard when you whenever somebody's signing you to con 
to, to, to produce content for them, at least in my industry, there's always gonna be a clause saying that like, the new content that's being created will be up to the standards pre-agreed upon by both parties, or up to the standards of what content was being created by party A or party B prior to the um, endorsement of this contract. That's, that's or the commission or whatever the contract. That's like standard clause, and every, you're always gonna see that. Nobody's gonna sign you to a contract, and then you just start doing like, hey guys, here's my five hour stream. Thanks for joining, but that's standard. This is standard entertainment, always. You're always gonna see provisions like this. How do you determine if the content is up to standard? It's gonna be debatable, but like it's an obvious clause that's gonna be in there that, I mean like if, if Crowder starts like doing like one segment every show and he starts significantly altering, it could be the structure of a show, it could be the guests that he has on a show, maybe they can say, hey, you had you know 25 guests last year on your show, this year you had two. Uh, there's a million different ways that you can check for quality, right? That's gonna be a bit more ambiguous, but of course that clause is gonna be there. Again, that's standard. Like, you're gonna see that in entertainment things. Like, it has to be as good as the stuff uh, that Steven's audience has come to expect from him. Um, and that'll come out of the 50 million. So it's not like, it's not like all of that 50 million goes right in Steven's pocket. He's gonna use some of it to pay for- A lot of it. Producers and, and studio space and camera uh, equipment and operators and lights. Uh, just like we're gonna use some of you know, the money that we make to pay for the infrastructure and the technology and the uh, marketing and the legal and all the other parts that go into making a successful business. Revenue collection that says we'll have the exclusive right to realize revenue in connection with all of his content and brand. We're paying you this guaranteed significant amount of money, $50 million. Uh, and for that, one of the things we're buying is the content, but we're also buying the right to monetize the content so that we can have a chance of making some money and not just spending money. What is the content? First, we broke this into- Yeah, so they'll they'll take the money, all of the monetization, they're gonna pay him and in, in exchange, they, they say they're buying the content. They're buying the money that the content earns. I mean, that's their risk in this, is that Crowder will produce content that people continue to want to buy, that they'll continue to pay to support. That's their downside risk. And that, that makes perfect sense. But again, they're what they're doing is they're saying, like, again, hypothetically, Mug Club makes $15 million a year based on- This whole argument is like hinging on this, like, he makes he makes 50 million a year on Mug Club and they only wanna pay him 30 million a year, blah, blah, blah. Like he's hinging his whole argument on these subscriber numbers. It's so silly. It's so silly. That one number that we picked. like All I of it, Omega Lol Decim is wrong? It's not all of it. It's not owned into perpetuity. It's for the term of the contract. Go, again, go reread it if you want. I don't know what the actual number is. Maybe it's way lower. I have no idea. But let's say it's $15 million a year because that's kind of looks like a safe bet. What they're saying is we're going to buy $15, $15 million a year for $12.5 million. That's what they're saying. Now, their risk is that Mug Club will stop producing $15 million a year. Crowder's risk is that he's going to out-earn the $12.5 million. But Crowder's already realizing the risk and has no upside potential. There's no benefit to Crowder to signing the contract. And they should know that. Like they should have, you'd think they'd have done market research. You'd think they'd have a friend at the Crowder show somewhere who would be willing to tell them what the subscriber numbers are. But it sounds like even Crowder didn't know exactly what those numbers are because it sounds like the blaze doesn't tell him. That's what I, that's what I heard. And I mean, to be fair, maybe they did. Maybe the subscriber numbers are. Think, and then think, 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 Nick. The contract says that they get exclusive rights to that money. Why would they write him a lower contract offer than what he's already bringing in sub numbers if those numbers are gonna transfer over? If they're gonna get ownership of that revenue, of course they're gonna write a higher contract for it because they know they're guaranteed that much income. Like, think. Aren't as high as people are estimating. As he 5030 says, overlapping audience, Crowder has never proved Mug Club would be all new subs. It's true, but for Crowder, all of the Mug Club subs are lost the moment he goes to Daily Wire. All of that revenue is gone no matter if it's overlapping or not. So Daily Wire, and again, this is part of the risk, but the reality is that Crowder's show likely will continue to grow so long as he does it. This is the trend on social media. Things tend to keep growing the longer you do it. The rate at which they grow is different for each person, but they tend to increase. Uh, Rob Raz says, why do you keep saying what he is already making? Mug Club belongs to Blaze, not Steven. Steven yes. was under a Daily Wire-like contract with the Blaze. Yes. Yeah, but Steven can monetize Mug Club. Wait, can he? I thought that the Mug Club subs went to the Blaze. That's why he doesn't know the number. 
And it sounds like Stephen had. Wait, is that? Can somebody give me a yes or no on that? I thought that, that I thought that the mug club numbers, the reason why Crowder didn't have access to them, was because they were being managed by the Blaze. So how so how can Stephen monetize the mug club? As some sort of mug club going again, because uh, he's talking about how mug club kept everything afloat. Mug club made everything happen. And we don't know the nature of his Blaze agreement. So I'm going to assume that the Mug Club, which might have been through Blaze, but was definitely specifically associated with Crowder. I'm going to assume that money is either there or will be there very easily if he just if he needs to open it up again. The daily, monthly, quarterly, and annual content. The daily content is going to be very obvious to you. He'll deliver a one and a half hour Louder with Crowder audio video show of a quality and kind consistent with the shows that he's currently producing four days a week. That's 192 original episodes a year if you factor in four weeks uh, of vacation, uh, including all ad reads and promotions as requested by us. So he's going to continue to produce his show, his his Louder with Crowder show, four days a week, all 192 times a year. I'll be mentioning it uh, ad nauseum here because it's the only way that I can get in touch with you. I don't know how many of you there, I only know that there are well over 300,000 of you who have paid to sign up and watch, that uh, hundreds of thousands of you watch on Mug Club every day, in addition to the two million or so. uh, Oh, so he he doesn't know the number. He has no idea. Somehow he knows it's over 300,000. I don't know if he's making a guess based on the the Blaze's sub numbers, overall numbers or whatever, but he doesn't seem to know what his numbers are then. So he doesn't know. Requested by Daily Wire uh, and means that'll include unless they have a different provision later, he doesn't in get to negotiate away the ads. Okay, this is so dumb. I don't. Maybe I don't know. I don't understand this. I don't understand. I'm too. I'm too dumb. I just don't understand. I'm too dumb. Okay, we're not doing this anymore. We're done. We're over this. We're over this. Go away.